want to tell them how I like them, Mike. So. Well, uh, my name is Keith Banks. I'm a personal chef, and uh, I obviously got to be one of the luckiest guys in Salem to be in a group that likes to zing zang and <laughs> Oh, shit, shit, shit. You guys see time, too. <laughs> well, it's been great to uh, be here. Uh, I'm happy to see all these uh, smiling, beautiful faces. And it's been great since I've been here to see all these kids running around. So, uh, what a great room. And I thank Amy for getting in touch with uh, your Becca and uh, allowing me to come here and speak today. I am a personal chef. Does anybody know what a personal chef is? They're for rich people. Uh, Somebody don't have to clean up after. Personal chef, uh, that means I don't work in a restaurant, but I've worked in many restaurants. Um, but what I do is I go into people's houses and I create meal plans for them. And these are people who don't cook, who are busy to cook, uh, professional people, uh, family people, people that are tired of going to restaurants every night and tired to spend money there. But we go in and we decide what kind of food you like and we prepare a menu and I do all the grocery shopping and I come to your house and I prepare meals for certain periods of time, a week, you know, a week or two weeks. Uh, we package them up, uh, we put some stuff in the refrigerator for you to have, uh, put some stuff in the freezer for you to have at uh, future dates and then uh, give you directions on the proper ways of uh, getting those ready to uh, eat for dinner. I also do private parties and cooking schools, teach people how to cook. I work a lot with people with uh, special diets that, uh, you know, low sodium, low fat diets, uh, people who just want to lose weight. So I create custom meal plans for people and, uh, you know, it's very rewarding and it's something that uh, I'd love to do. And uh, before that, I was actually a golf pro. I was the head pro out at Italy Hills. You guys know where that is, so I ended that position, I retired from there about a year ago, and I've uh, been really thinking about trying to get back in the food industry, and uh, I really didn't want to go back in and work in restaurants, uh, that's awfully hard work, and uh, I personally like being the boss, too, so uh, I created my own business, uh, you know, ended up being a perfect thing for me to become a personal chef, so. Um, again, I enjoy it. I enjoy the parties. I enjoy the people, getting to know different people. You know. And uh, anyway, so that's a personal chef. Um, we're going to talk today a little bit about family. I'm going to give you a little of my background since I've seen so many kids here. I started cooking when, with my mom at about five years old. And I have memories. She made the best cinnamon rolls in the world. And I remember being part of that, and that's, uh, you know, obviously what's kind of built the foundation of what I do now. Uh, being in the kitchen with her, uh, I only have one bad memory of touching the electric flame once that was all red, but uh, I survived that. But uh, cinnamon rolls, cookies, my mom was very good about getting me to you know, participate in the meals and tasting first things, what they taste like before they're cooked, and then tasting things after the meal's prepared. So we'll talk today on how to get your kids involved, and you know, some of them may be young now, but as soon as you can get them in the kitchen and get them participating, um, you know, I'm, I'm really big, and I'm, I'm kind of seeing a trend in the United States of people getting back to fresher, uh, fresher foods, uh, better eating habits, and uh, you know, trying to get kids to develop eating habits uh, at an early age, so good eating habits at an early age. So I think getting them to participate uh, was great. At 12 years old, uh, my parents ended up getting a divorce, which was a tragedy in one hand, but a, you know, it was uh, actually very good in the other hand. Um, my dad had worked for American Airlines, and my mom, when they divorced, we lived in Oklahoma, and my mom, when uh, they divorced, moved to Palm Springs, California. So the court ordered them joint custody. And since my dad worked for American Airlines, every two weeks I flew to Palm Springs to be with my mom. So pretty good deal for me. Uh, 
I wanted to be with my dad at the time. He was a dad's guy. So, uh, and uh, I realized uh, living with dad that uh, he could make Campbell's tomato soup. Mm -hmm. uh, and his big, oh, uh, excuse me, boiled eggs, which we actually happened to go on a he put some boiled eggs in and we happened to go out once and we realized about two hours later that the eggs were still cooking at the house. So that was a mess. And his specialty was cinnamon toast. So I realized that, uh, you know, he wasn't going to learn how to cook, so I better, you know, if I wanted to eat something better than that, which I did, uh, I better learn to cook. On the other side of that, going to Palm Springs, um, I became really good friends with a man named Sam Intervini, who was my mentor and what I did. Um, again, I was a young kid there, and he owned a family-owned Italian restaurant, which was great. And when we moved out there, we started going, and it was within bicycle distance. So one night he called, and his dishwasher left. And you know, I'm 11 years old, and it was probably against child labor laws at that point, but I went up and went to work as a dishwasher for him, and that was, you know, it was fun. So, anyway, we got to be good friends, and uh, every day after school, I just started going up and hanging out at his place, and, you know, pretty soon I'm making pizzas, and I'm, you know, basically working, at, by the time I'm 12 years old, working in the kitchen. So, I started young, but I loved every minute of it, and it kind of built the foundation for me, built a love for food uh, that carries me over now. And uh, anyway, that kind of gives you my history, but uh, I'm really big on getting the family involved and creating family meals. The other thing that we uh, have done with our family, uh, I have a daughter, Jenna, and my wife, Sherry. My wife works up at Nike. Um, my daughter just graduated from college, but all growing up, uh, actually when I met them, She's my stepdaughter, and I met them here in Salem. We met on an airplane, and I remember the first night going over to uh, their condo, and it was here in Salem. It was over at uh, Hidden Lakes, and it was kind of the first date, and they were making me spaghetti and meatballs. And so I come in, and they knew I was a chef. And uh, we're kind of getting to know each other, and this is the first real night I've been around her daughter, and so we walked in the kitchen, and sitting there with Jenna, and I said, Jenna, do you know how you can tell when pasta is done? And she kind of looked at me, and I took a piece of spaghetti, and I threw it up on her wall, and it sticks up on her wall. And she looks at her mom like, how bad of trouble is he in? <laughs> so anyway, Jenna and I were kind of hooked there, and it kind of got her hooked on, they were literally bagels and salad every day, that's all they ate. And uh, white walls on their, uh, on their condo, and here comes me, a little bit of the artsy person. So uh, we've made a good uh, kind of family together, and uh, Jenna got very involved in cooking, and now she, she's actually a wonderful cook. And, you know, I think moments like that, and getting her involved, and we always participated in a, as a family, you know, preparing the meals, and, we're gonna make some salad dressings here, something else I'm really big on. But, uh, you know, I take great pride in, you know, being part of her coming around and being, the, you know, being interested in food and trying to find new foods. And she always tasted everything. And, uh, you know, just something that uh, I really love. So, anyway, that's a little bit about me. So, uh, how about a little bit about you all? How many of you are great cooks? How many of you know how to cook? How many of you are terrified of the kitchen? <laughs> All of the above. How many of you own a crock pot? Yeah, that's good. How many of you actually use it? What's a play? Yeah. Hey, good percentage. <laughs> Every For years, it took up a lot of space in my house. So crockpots, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about this today. 
uh, crock pot is actually, there's no such thing as a crock pot unless you actually buy the brand crock pot. They're actually